Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to show you guys step by step how to make a cinematic render of Jupiter. I said Saturn like several times when I was doing practicing this tutorial. So if I accidentally say Saturn anytime in the video, I apologize, but we're making Jupiter. It's definitely Jupiter. And um, we're going to be making a step by step and then making this cool animation as you guys can see here. So it's a really fun one. I'll be uploading my final result to Patreon. And uh, let's hop in and make this planetary cinematic render. So what we're going to do is download just two textures that we're going to be able to use for this project. So the first one and the most important one is going to be this one here from the NASA website. And you're going to just scroll down when you click on a link below. And you're just going to go to the first global map of Jupiter. You'll see a picture of it. You can go ahead and download that. And it gives you an option here. Obviously go for the bigger one. So go ahead and download that. And then you're going to want this one over here, which I'm also going to put in the description below. You're going to go here and click free download and download that one as well. So here you can see in my downloads folder on my computer, I have these two images. We're now going to go ahead and open up a blender and we're going to press A to select everything and an X and delete. We're then going to go shift A and we're going to go to our mesh options and add in a UV sphere. We're going to right click and go shade smooth and let's go over to our modifiers and let's give it a subdivision surface modifier. And now that we have that done, we're going to go into our front orthographic view. We're going to go shift A. Let's add in a camera. And uh, I'm just going to go into my right orthographic actually. and just go G, Y and move it back. And I'm going to go back into my camera view. And at this point, you can move the camera in however you want. So for me, I'm going to kind of zoom in and then move over to the side a little bit like so. And I think that looks pretty good. And then what we're going to do, we're going to go over to our renderer. We're going to change it to cycles. And let's go to the device and make a GPU. And we're going to come to our render amount here and let's uh, make the max samples. Let's make that 50 because um, we're doing an animation. You can go higher if you want. Um, that's just what I'm going to set it to. And then we're going to go Z and we're going to go rendered. And then if you go control B, you can drag over your camera to limit the rendering to your camera. So now we have this set up. Let's add in some lighting. So we're going to go shift A. Let's add in a sunlight. And um, we're just going to move that over to the side by pressing G and we're going to rotate it like so. We're going to go to our strength here. Let's make that strength 20. And when it comes to our world um, properties here, let's make it all the way down to black. So now we have something like this. Now, some people will um, do a thing where they have it completely black over here. I prefer to duplicate my light and rotate it and just go to my light and make it something like 0.1, like very, very light. In fact, I might even move it further away because I think it's nice just to have a little bit of lighting over there and not a fully dark shadow. That's just more of an artistic choice. Um, you could look at some real reference photos to see just how dark that'll be. But with our main sunlight here, we're going to come here as well to the angle. And I think if we uh, increase that angle, this shadow here is going to be a lot softer. Now for me, once again, that's just purely an aesthetic choice. I might grab this light over here and increase that angle as well, just to soften that a little bit. Um, but that's just my own personal preference. And now we have this going on here. So let's go shift A, let's add in an empty. And let's grab these two lights and holding in shift, let's select the empty and go control P. Let's go object, keep transform. And we're gonna come here to our frames. Let's go with 200 frames. And we're gonna come to frame one. And we're gonna go I, I on our keyboard and we're going to go and give this a rotation keyframe on frame one and then we're going to come up to frame 200 and then we're going to go into our camera view we're going to go Z we're going to go rendered and then we're going to double tap R just slightly rotate it off like so and then we're going to go I and insert a rotation now you could come here to frame one and able auto keying you can always just adjust this a little bit if you want to and then grab both of these keyframes and press T and then make it linear. So it doesn't ease in or ease out. So it's just a linear speed all the way across. If we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we can see we have this nice shadow moving across like this, which looks really cool, okay? And we're also gonna grab our Jupiter now and let's go over to our materials. And let's go new material. Let's just call it Jupiter. And let's come to our base color and let's give it an image texture. Let's go open. I'm going to go to my download, so I'm going to click on that Jupyter map and go open. Then if you go Z and you go material preview, it should be almost perfect because Blender already has it unwrapped. Now, if you see this blackness here, just go over to your UV editing 
And then over here, just grab these um, guys over here and go G and just move them down. And then grab all of these guys down here and then go G and move them up. And you're gonna see now, if we look, it's a little bit stretched, but we're not gonna notice that too much. So this should be fine from this angle. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to our layout and let's go to frame one. And let's slightly rotate Jupiter. And let's go I and insert a rotation. And let's come to frame 200 and let's just go R and rotate it a little bit like so. And then go I and insert a rotation. Grab both of these keyframes and go T and make it linear. So now we also have a little bit of rotation in the planet. In fact, you could even go as far as um, on the end here, enable auto keying and go R double Z and you just rotate it a little bit side, like that. So you have a little bit of um, rotation on the pole as well. Just to add a little bit of dynamic. I think that looks quite cool. Then we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a plane. We're gonna go S to scale it up and then R X nine zero and hit enter. And for me, I'm just gonna move that way back, like so. And in my camera view, I'm gonna scale that guy up and then I'm gonna go S, X, and scale along the X. And we're just roughly trying to match it up to the background, like so. Let's go give that a new material and call it stars. Let's go to the surface and let's make it a mission by going up here to a mission. Let's click on the base color here and let's go make it an image texture. Let's go open and let's go to our desktop or our downloads, wherever you have it, and then click on that Pexels image and go open image. And now if you go Z and you go material preview, you can see this, you might have to go to your UV editing and then just go U and go project from view with the UV unwrapping and then just scale it roughly. It doesn't matter if it's not 100% the same dimensions, just more or less should be fine. If we now go Z and we go rendered, we should see this. But one more thing we can do to make this look even cooler is to go to our shading workspace and with the stars over here, if we go Z and we go rendered, we can always come here and let's just grab this, move it over and go shift A, search and get a contrast, a brightness and contrast. Let's place that over here and let's just bump up that contrast a little bit like so. And I think that looks kind of cool. And uh, you can go shift A, search and get a saturation. And let's just take the saturation down just a bit. That's just my personal preference there. Um, and there we have it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just save. I'm gonna save it to my desktop. And let's quickly do a little bit of a test render. So we're just gonna go render, render image. And wow, that's looking really cool, but we can make it look even better. So let's close this and go to our compositing. Let's go use nodes. And let's drag this guy over here and go shift A, search, let's get a viewer. And we're gonna go ahead and plug the image into here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go V just to zoom back out. And you can go shift and left click and just drag over these two cables just to bind them together. And we're gonna go shift A search and get a lens distortion. And let's go ahead and give this point on the distortion uh, dispersion or maybe even 0.02, I think, there we go. And then let's go fit to fit the image. And then we're gonna go shift A search and get a glow or a glare. I think it's called a glare, yeah, glare and place that over here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and make it full glow. And that's it. Now we have a little bit of glow here. That's looking really cool. So this is what we have at the moment. And now if you render this out as an animation, it's gonna look even cooler. So the way you can do that is to go over here to your output properties, select a folder on your computer. I'm gonna go with my desktop. Go to your file format, change it to FFmpeg video. And under your encoding, you can change the container to MP4. Make sure to save. And then you can go render and render this out as an animation. Now I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do it right now. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and I'll be uploading my original to my Patreon. And when you guys go to Patreon and support me there, it really helps me to make more of this sort of content for you. And you can also get access to a lot of my Blender files. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.